Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, so uh, it's a um, great pleasure to have uh, Shili uh, talking today. Uh, so she is a graduate student at uh, Princeton University. Uh, he's graduating this year. <coughs> so um, uh, his advisor is uh, Moses Sharikar, and uh, she did some great work on approximation algorithms. Uh, he has a best paper award uh, at uh, Fox and uh, Best Student Paper Award at ICALP. Uh, and uh, today he will talk about uh, some of his um, great work in this area. <coughs> OK, thank you, Kostya. So I'll talk about approximation algorithms for facility location and network routing problems. Can you hear me? OK. As you can see from the title, this is about approximation algorithms. So what is approximation algorithms? I guess there are many experts here, but uh, to make this talk to be self-contained, I still need to say something. So uh, we know many natural problems are NP-hard. If you believe P is not equal to NP, there are no polynomial time algorithm to solve them exactly. So what we are looking for are algorithms that can find a sub-optimal solution. Mm -hmm. Then the approximation ratio will measure how good the suboptimal solution is. Uh, there are two major themes in my program, in my research in graduate program. One is the orange theme, is facility location problems. The other is a uh, black theme, is network routing problems. So why do I make it orange, black? Because there are the corners of Princeton University. <laughs> OK, so for the major part of the talk, I will be focusing on, on this part. And the second part, will, I'll sketch my results on my network routing problems. So here is the facility location problems. And uh, here is a map of Walmart stores in Washington state. You can see Walmart did a very good job. The stores are very well distributed. For example, in here, Seattle is a big city. There are many, many stores around here. And this is the problem that Walmart faced at the beginning. Suppose we want to put 50 stores in Washington state. Where should we put the 50 stores? So that the average traveling time of people to the nearest Walmart shop is minimized. So this is exactly the k-median problem we are going to talk about. And in this problem, we are given a set F of potential facility locations and a set C of clients. You can guess what F and C is in the previous Walmart example. And we are given a set uh, number K on the number of facilities we can open and a metric D over F and C. So in the Walmart instance, D is just the travel out time. The goal of this problem is to open a set A's of at most K facilities such that the distance over, uh, the sum of distance over all kinds J the, from D, J to A's is minimized. Here, the distance from J to A's is just a minimal distance from J to the a facility I in S. For example, in this instance, this might be an optimal solution. We open three facilities. And uh, k-median can also be used as a clustering algorithm. It is a variant of k-means clustering. Suppose we are given a set of data points. We know they are from k clusters. How can we recover the k clusters? Well, we just solve the k-median problem where each point is both a vicinity and a client. Suppose we get those uh, K points, then the Voronoi diagram of the K points will give us the clusters. Here is the history of K-medium from the approximation algorithm point of view. 
now we know there are some constant approximations for this problem, but for a long time we don't know any constant approximation. We only know pseudo approximation and super constant approximation. For pseudo approximation, there is one approximation with order k log n open facilities, and uh, there is one uh, with two times one plus epsilon approximation with one plus one over epsilon times k facilities. And super constant approximation, we have a log n times log log n approximation, and this was improved to log k, log log k. So for constant approximation, what do we know? The first constant approximation was a six and a two thirds approximation due to Charika, Guha, Tados, and Shimois. Later, Jane and Vazrani gave a primal dual six approximation. And uh, this was improved to four approximation by Charika and Guha. Now the best approximation is a three plus epsilon approximation uh, due to Aya, et cetera. And uh, this algorithm is based on local search. And in this talk, I'm going to give a new algorithm which gives one plus root three plus epsilon approximation. And this is joint work with Una Svensson. And on the hardness, on the negative side, we have one plus two over E hardness of approximation for this problem. So there is another problem related to k-median. It's called a facility location problem. In this problem, instead of have a number k on the number of facilities we can open, we have a facility cost fi for each facility i. Now the output can be anything. We don't have the size of S is at most k. But in order to prevent us from opening too many facilities, the objective function will contain a term for the cost of opening facilities in S. It's sum of i A in S, f of i. So this is the objective function. For example, OK, this is called the facility cost, and this is called the connection cost. For example, if this these are the facility costs of facilities. Maybe those two facilities are too expensive to open. The optimal solution will be like this, open these two. So facility location problem has rich history, and it was studied in 1980s in operations research. A study of facility location from approximation point of view started in 82. The first approximation algorithm was the order of log n approximation due to Hockbaum. The first constant approximation was a 3.16 approximation due to Shimois, Tados, and Agua. And uh, after known sequence of work, there's a known sequence of work you can see. The current based approximation ratio is 1.488 due to myself. And on the negative side, this problem is 1.463 hard to approximate. You can see there is a very small gap. So there are many algorithms here, and many techniques are used in those problems. This problem is really a test ground for the techniques of approximation algorithms. So, I've introduced two problems, facility location and the k-median. The question is, are, re are they related? Well, from the descriptions, you can see they are related in some way. But is there a deeper connection? The answer is yes. I'm going to define it now. So we say an uh, algorithm give a gamma f gamma c bifurcate approximation for facility location if it always output a solution whose facility cost over gamma f plus connection cost over gamma c is at most opt. So this is the definition of gamma f gamma c, bifurcate approximation. From the definition, we can see that a alpha alpha bifurcate approximation is just alpha bif alpha approximation, right? f plus c over alpha is at most opt. And we also say uh, one alpha bifurcate approximation is a uh, Lagrangian multiplier preserving 
or LMP alpha approximation. So now I'm going to define, uh, talk about the connection. Here is the curve of so no bound for the bifect approximation for facility location. That means for fixed gamma f, we cannot do a gamma f gamma c bifect approximation for gamma c better than this number. So there are two important points here. One is when gamma f equals one, we have gamma c equals one plus two over e. This is a hardness result for k-medium. And the other point is when gamma f equals gamma c, which equals 1.463. And this is hardness for vicinity location. On the positive side, we also have a curve. On the right side of the curve, uh, the upper bound and the lower bound matches. Uh, there is no gap. But on the left side, there is a gap. There are also two important points here. When gamma f equals gamma c, we have a 1.488 uh, approximation for vicinity location. When gamma f equals 1, we have a 2 LMP approximation for k median. You see, I did not give a note for this number here. So what will be a natural guess for the note here based on the previous three notes? Here, hardness, approximation, hardness, right? Uh, is a reasonable guess will be is this uh, approximation for k-median, the two? OK. The answer is, of course, no, because we only knew a 3 plus epsilon approximation, right? OK, in fact, we need to uh, pay another factor of 2. So it would be 2 times 2 equals 4 if we use this. Uh, so as J and Vazirani showed that a uh, LMP of approximation for UFL will give a two alpha approximation for k-median. So this is the connection between the two problems. But from this connection, we can only get a four approximation. OK, any question between, before I move to the next part, or the introduction part? Is there any kind of integrality gap? Not integrality gap, but known gap between LMP approximation and uh, approximation. You can't do better than something. Oh, this? Yeah. This two is tight. Yeah, it's not a hardness result, but there is an example. Use that analysis, you can only get a two. OK. So I'll move to the next part. Uh, I'll introduce our algorithm for k-medium. And our algorithm is based on two main components. Both of them are new. And I think they are both interesting. First component is a reduction component. We show that it suffices to give a solution with k plus constant facilities. And our reduction preserves approximation. So you know in the k-medium, we have a hard constraint. We can only open at most k facilities. But we say, OK, we can relax this constraint a little bit. We can open k plus constant number of facilities. The second component is a pseudo approximation component. We can find a solution of cost 1 plus root 3 plus epsilon times opt with k plus order of 1 over epsilon facilities. This is also interesting because previously we know if we want to improve the 3 plus epsilon approximation, we need to open at least k plus little or omega k k plus omega k facilities. Instead, we only open k plus a constant number of facilities. And we are able to improve the 3 plus epsilon approximation. So the, those two components will give us the algorithm. So let's consider the first component. This is a more specific definition of the component. We have a algorithm A which is an alpha approximation for k-medium with k plus c open facilities. Then we can have another algorithm A prime, given A as a black box. A prime is an alpha plus epsilon approximation with exactly k open facilities. Regarding the running time of A prime, A prime we will call A 
n to the order c over epsilon times. As long as c and epsilon are all constants, this is a polynomial time algorithm. I'm not going to describe how the reduction works, but I will just answer all of these questions you might have. There are bad instances, right? For example, if we have k plus 1 far away clusters, they are far away from each other. And if we open k plus 1 facilities, we can open one in each cluster, then the cost will be almost zero. But if we open only k facilities, the cost will be huge since we need to connect a whole cluster to a far away vicinity. So this will be huge. Then if A gives a solution with k plus 1 vicinities, how can we convert it to a solution with k vicinities? And uh, the problem is handled by the definition of dense vicinities. We will say that this will never happen after we pre-process in the uh, instance. So this is how we define a dense vicinity. Let bi be a small ball around i. I will not give the exact definition of a small ball, but there is a definition. For example, this is i and this will be bi. We say i is a dense if the connection cost of, of clients in bi is at least a. And you can see from this instance, i is a dense for really huge a, for a roughly equal to opt, because the whole optimal solution is contributed by the set of clients here. Right. Then this, we have a a dense vicinity i. So our algorithm will work directly if there are no opt over t dense vicinities for t equals order of c over epsilon. So when c and epsilon are constants, this is a constant. This is the first lemma. Then we show that we can reduce uh, any instance to such an instance we in n to the order t time. Combining these two lemmas, we have our first component. Okay, question so far for the first component. I still didn't understand the reduction. So, if that example is the instance, okay. you're saying that you're going to rule out this kind of example? Yeah, we say, so we said that that instance is not good because there is opt dense vicinity, right? So we say that our reduction component can work only if there is no dense vicinity. But that instance has a dense vicinity. So we will not work directly on that instance. And our second lemma say, says that we can reduce any instance to such an instance. But I haven't said how to prove this lemma. If, this, if the instance you confront is exactly... Identical. Okay, so th this is a proof of, of this lemma. Roughly speaking, if we know the optimal solution, suppose we know, we know this is not a... This is a dense, right? Then we all just remove this vicinity because this vicinity is not open. We know that. Suppose we know opt. Remove this vicinity and all the vicinities that are closer to this vicinity than this vicinity. Suppose there is a vicinity here, because we know the closest open vicinity of this guy is this guy, then this guy won't be open. We remove those vicinities. And then we check again if there is a opt over t dense vicinity. If yes, we remove that. So every time we remove a, a set of vicinities, we identify the ball bi of canines, those ball will be disjoint. So each ball will contribute to opt over t in the optimal solution. So we can only remove at most t balls. That means, so even if we don't know the optimal solution, we can just guess the t balls. We remove the t balls, 
then we get a good instance. In this particular example, what instance do we get? We remove this vicinity. And then we have only k facilities, then it will be trivial. OK. Any questions? OK, I'll move to the next part. We already showed that a LMP2 approximation for facility location does not immediately imply an integral solution of cost to opt. But we can relax this a little bit. Instead of requiring an integral solution, we can have a bipoint solution. So if we change this integral solution to a bipoint solution, this will be true. So what is a bipoint solution? It's really a convex combination of two solutions. In this instance, we have a solution S1, and we have a solution S2. Think of S1 has size K1, S2 has size K2, and K is between K1 and K2. Then a let A and B be the numbers such as A plus B equals 1, A K1 times plus B K2 equals K. Then the bipoint solution will be A times S1 plus B times S2. What this means is we take A fraction of the solution S1 and B fraction of the solution S2. Then in expectation we will have K open facilities, right? So this is the solution. Then the cost of this bipoint solution will be A times cost of S1 plus B times the cost of S2. So this is the definition. And again, as Rani showed, give a bipoint solution of cost C, we can convert it to an integral solution of cost 2C. And uh, also this fact of 2 is tight, as we can see from the, this example. So this is a gap 2 instance, but it's also an instance for the integrality gap. We have two solutions, S1, there is only one vicinity, and S2, we have k plus one vicinities. And from S1 to each client here, the distance is one. And there's a mapping here, the distance are all zeros here, okay? So you can see the cost of this integral solution is two. Why? Because if you open, you can only open k vicinities. If you open this one, and k minus one vicinities here, suppose, then this will have cost one. This will have cost one. So the cost is two. Or you can open k plus one, uh, k facilities here. Then there, there is a uh, client, it will cost two, right? So the integral solution is two. What about a uh, bipoint solution? Well, k1 equals one, s1 has size one, s2 has size k plus one, and the cost of the first solution is k plus one, right? If we only open one, and the cost of the second solution is zero, if we open k plus one. And the right combination will be take k, one over k fraction of the first guy, and k minus one over k fraction of the second guy. So this will open k facilities in expectation. If we take this, then, 1 over k times the cost of first solution plus k minus 1 over k of cost times cost of the second solution, it will be k plus 1 over k. So you can see there is a two gap. Okay. So what this means? We have a k median instance. We can lose a factor of 2, get a bipoint solution. And we have to lose another factor of 2 to get an integral solution. For these two, we don't know how to improve. And for these two, we cannot improve because there's a gap instance. However, we can use our first component. In order to get an approximation, we don't need an integral solution. We only need a solution with k plus c facilities. Don't, not exactly k facilities. So if we using this, what is the fact we, we are lose here? We show that given a bipoint solution of cost C, we can have a solution of cost at most 1 plus square root 3 plus epsilon over 2 times C. 
with k plus order 1 over epsilon of affinities. So this is our lemma. Before going to prove our lemma directly, I will talk about the Jan Vazirani's algorithm and show our improvement. So what is Jan Vazirani's algorithm? To give a two-factor approximation, uh, to know the fact of two. Suppose this is a bifactor approximation, a bipoint uh, solution. Ideally, we want to open a vicinity here with probability A, because we have A times S1, and uh, a vicinity here with probability B. But we do it in a dependent way. So we map each vicinity here to the nearest vicinity on the right side, and we select a set S prime 2. So S prime 2 has the same size as S1, and also it should contain, if a vicinity is mapped by some vicinity here, it should be contained in S prime 2. For example, here we need to choose four vicinities. We must choose these three because they are mapped. And the other one we can choose arbitrarily. Then the algorithm is with probability A, we open everything here. With probability B, we open everything here. So either open this or open this. For the remaining vicinities, we open K minus K1 randomly. So here is analysis. It's based on a client by client analysis. <coughs> Suppose this is J, we have I1, we have I2. J is connected to first solution in I1 and the second solution in J2. And we know there is a close vicinity to I1. The distance is at most D1 plus D2 from I1, right? Because here to here is at most D1 plus D2, and I3 is the closest vicinity to I1. So this is at most D1 plus D2. If we analyze the expected connection cost of J, we do it the following way. If I2 is open, we connect J to I2. Otherwise, if I1 is open, we connect J to I1. Otherwise, we connect J to I3, because it will always be open. This, we will have a factor of two nodes here. OK, great. So this is the JV algorithm. So basic idea is either I1 is open or I3 is open. We always have a backup. So here is our improvement. So on average, we know I D1 is larger than D2. Why? Because this is a smaller solution. We open a smaller number of vicinities. So the cost will be larger. So D1 is greater than D2. And uh, in this graph, the distance between J and I3 could be as large as 2 times D1 plus D2, right? So this is big. We don't want it. What if we change I3 to here? Originally, it was here. What if we change I3 to here? Now, the distance between J and I3 will be D1 plus 2D2 instead of 2D1 plus D2. It's better because D1 is greater than equal to D2. If we use the same analysis, suppose it will go through. What we can get is 1 plus square root 3 plus over 2. So that's it. We change I3 from here to here. That means we change 2D1 plus D2 to D1 plus 2D2. And what's the requirement? If we, so originally we map each vicinity here to the nearest vicinity here. Now we want to map each vicinity here to the nearest vicinity here. We still need to guarantee that either this is open or this is open. That means here we have a star. If the center of the star is not open, we should open everything here. So what's the first try? First try might be we open each star independent. Here with probability A, here with probability P. The, and then that analysis will go through, so the expected connection cost. But the second part is we don't have a tail bound on the number of open facilities. 
we cannot guarantee we always open K. Instead, the high level idea of our algorithm is if a star is very large, we always open the center and we open some leaves. The probability of we open a leaf will be smaller than B, but it's roughly B. And we group small stars of the same size. And for each group, we will lose a d effect of three. And the number of groups will be order one over epsilon. So we open k plus order of epsilon facilities. This is a rough idea. So any questions for this part, for the second component? We don't know, but for our analysis, it's tight. I, uh, we don't have a tight example yet. Okay. So to sum up, we have a 1 plus square root 3 plus epsilon approximation for k-medium. And uh, the important component is we show that it suffices to give a solution with k plus constant facilities. So our algorithm actually implicitly used Shirani Adams hierarchy. Actually, at the first, our algorithm is based on this hierarchy. And later, we were able to remove the hierarchy and get an algorithm of the same guarantee with the same running time. So where is the Shirani Adams hierarchy used? So recall that we have a bad instance, right? We say that we can get a good instance. But how do we get a good instance? We guess t events. If we know these t events happened, and then we get a good instance. If we are using Shirani Adams hierarchy, we don't need to guess. We just look at the fractional solution. We know this bad event happened, and we condition no, we condition on this, uh, the condition on the event, and reduce the level by one, and then conditioning of another event. Finally, we will get a level one LP. So that's how we use Shirani Adams hierarchy. Okay. okay. And this is all built on top of the two approximation algorithm for, uh, so this was the, the top point of that curve? Uh, yeah, 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 based on that. Yeah, that is also based on LP, you can see. It's primal dual. So it's, it implicitly used the LP. OK. So now I will talk about network routing problems. This is the general setting. We are given a graph G. You can think of it as a network. And we are given pairs of terminals. S1, T1, S2, T2, and SK, TK. And each pair, SI, TI, wants to set up a connection in this network. Maybe each link has limited resource, and we cannot connect all pairs. The goal might be route as many pairs as possible. Or if we have to connect all pairs, then one goal might be minimize congestion. What this means is by how much should we scale up the resources so that we can connect all of them? Depending on the goal, we have two specific problems. One is called the edge disjoint path. And the goal is to route as many pairs as possible using edge disjoint path. So each edge can only be used by one path. In this example, for example, we can connect S1 to T1, S2 to T2, and the answer is 2. And another the goal is to route all pairs so that we minimize the congestion. This is called the congestion minimization problem. In this instance, if we connect all pairs, this edge will be used by three paths. So the congestion is 3. So the two problems arise in the context of VLSI in the history. In VLSI design, 
we wanted to put many transistors in a single chip, and we use wires to connect pairs of chips. It's desirable to say that we connect many pairs in one layer, or we want to connect all pairs but minimize the number of layers. So this is one setting in VLSI. Also, EDP is an important packing problem in graph theory, and it was studied in a survey paper by Frank. Moreover, EDP is a very important element in the graph minor theories of Robinson and Seymour from 83 to uh, 04. There are 20 papers over these years. And uh, what's known from approximation algorithm point of view for the two problems? Well, despite of its known history, we, what we know here is only a square root n approximation. n is the size of the graph. For congestion minimization, we only have a log n over log log n approximation. This is based on the randomized routing. If you know about randomized routing, probably this is the first algorithm you learned. And uh, on the negative side, we have a square root log n hardness for EDP and uh, uh, log log n hardness for congestion minimization. So you can see there are exponential gaps for both problems. Okay, since we haven't made much progress on EDP, maybe we ask, we are wondering for, we are asking for too much. So congestion, uh, edge disjoint constraint is really a hard constraint. What if we relax that constraint, constraint? We say that what if each edge can be used by C passes? That means we can have congestion C on the graph. This defines our problem called edge disjoint path with congestion problem. And uh, we say a solution is a half hour approximation for EDP with congestion C if it allows opt over half hour pairs with congestion C. Here opt is optimal number of pairs you can route with congestion one. So we are comparing ourselves with optimal solution with congestion one, but we can have congestion C. So, okay. What do we know? If C equals one, this is just the normal EDP problem. We have a square root n upper bound and a square root log n lower bound. And the randomized rounding procedure also gives us constant approximation with congestion log n over log log n. For general C, we have an upper bound of n to the one over C and a lower bound of log n to the one over C plus one. If you look at this trade-off, in order to get, in order to get a polynogarithmic approximation, you really need this polynogarithmic uh, congestion. And uh, then in a breakthrough result by Andrews, we, uh, we show that, uh, he showed that to get a polynog n approximation, we only need a polynog log n congestion. And this result was improved by choose Hoy to 14. Okay, think of k equals to n, so those are the same. And for congestion two, we know here we have a square root n. This is not better than the congestion one case. What is k? k is the number of pairs. We, have, we need to connect k pairs. So for k equals two, this result can only give you as square root n. It's no better than uh, the first uh, congestion one case. This was improved to n to the three over seven, the approximation for two. So now what we have, we have a congestion two with approximation n to the three over seven and the congestion 14 for polynomial k approximation. So what we get is here with congestion two we get a point log k. This is a joint work with choose Hoy. So we improved both results. So you can see improved all those results. So the only problem left is the congestion one case. 
So we show that there is a polynomial k approximation algorithm for EDP with congestion 2. Let's recall what this means. We can route opt over polynomial k pairs with congestion 2, where opt is optimal number of pairs with congestion 1. Actually, we get a stronger result for free. If only we change this 1 to 2, it's still true. So let's sketch our result. We so it's, uh, originally it was a pseudo approximation. So opt is uh, the con optimal number of pairs we can route with, with congestion one, but we get this for free. So suppose the graph was Eulerian. Can you can you like is is two to make it Eulerian or is two really important? No, even if this is one hundred one thousand, this is still true. No, no, so so we will use. I'm, I'm saying suppose the graph is Eulerian. Eulerian, yeah. Uh, every vertex is even degree. Uh, can you? Uh, yeah, that we thought about it. I don't know. So can but you get condition one on those graphs? No. At least the LP gap is large for that graph, for or in needing graph, because all those results are based on the LP. Mm -hmm. um, for in needing graph, and we still have a huge gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know. So I only have time to sketch our result. So we first solve a natural LP, then we decompose the instance into many good instances. After this step, we throw, out, throw away the LP solution, and uh, our algorithm is purely combinatorial. For each instance, we build a crossbar, and we solve the problem inside the crossbar. So the congestion 2 comes from the crossbar. So what is a crossbar? Roughly speaking, we have many clusters, and we have many trees. Each tree contains a terminal, and it contains one edge from each cluster. This is one tree, this is another tree. There are many trees. And if we look at the set of edges here for one cluster, they are very well connected. OK, here comes our open problems in the future directions. For you, I've seen in the occasion the comedian, one open problem is what is the gap between the integral solution with k plus 1 open facilities and the LP value with k open facilities? So why this is important? We conjectured that 1 plus 2 over e should be the right answer for k-median. But the natural LP relaxation is not good enough because it has an integrand gap too. Now we show that. That might be enough if we are now k plus 1 open facilities. Currently, we don't know any gap better than 1 plus 2 over e for this question. Also, it might be important, uh, interesting to close the gap for the location. Although the gap is very small now, but uh, there is no, uh, no gap is better than a gap. So there is another variant of k-median. It's called a capacitated k-median. So a facility might have a capacities. For that problem, we don't know any constant approximation. It might be good to give a constant approximation. For EDB part, one big problem is what can we get with congestion 1? And uh, this is even interesting for planar graph. For planar graphs, we can all, all only get a square root n. Based uh, upper bound is also square root n. And, uh, for congestion minimization problem, can we either improve the lower bound or improve the upper bound? The, those questions are interesting also, I think. So here is my long-term directions. Previously, are just open, problem, open problems related to my talk. And first, I'm opening, I'm willing to work on many challenging problems in approximation algorithms. Those are just a few of them. Then I hope to understand the hierarchies better. There are many results related to LP or SDP hierarchies, but most of them are negative. And our k-median result can be viewed as a positive result for using LP hierarchies. And can our techniques used for other problems? And I don't have a candidate yet, candidate problem yet. 
it would be great if it can be applied to other problems as well. Also, I hope to understand the limits of LP for approximation algorithms. Recently, there have been results. There have been results showing that the limit of LP for solving TSP exactly and approximating clinique. It would be great if this technique can be used for other problems. And finally, I hope to get into some other areas, such as online algorithms or in the streaming algorithms. And that's it. Thank you. This one. This one. <laughs> so, uh, also one thing, I guess, a natural question comes in limits of LP and approximation algorithm. When you say, like, most of these, a lot of there be a lot of results which show that hierarchies don't work. Yeah, that's for, uh, for uh, problems. Yeah, for hierarchies, not for a general LP. So, but, but those it, two results are for general LP. Yes, but are there actually problems where, in some sense, uh, the natural LP does not work, but uh, maybe a smarter LP works? Uh, no, I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. We don't know any such. I don't know any such result. Maybe because we don't have a good understanding of the LP hierarchies, LP or SDP hierarchies. For uh, the routing problem in, in directed graph, so this is. Uh, oh, for directed graph, yeah, this I haven't is talked soft about it. Or a This is soft. Uh, for EDP, uh, square root n is tight. For congestion minimization, knock n over knock knock n is tight. No, your result for. Uh, so you had this congestion too. Mm -hmm. So is it. Uh, Equivalent to say that if you have an instance in which every edge is doubled, yes, then you get a, a polylogarithmic approximation algorithm. Yeah, if it's a graph has a property that every edge has a parallel edge, then you have a polylog approximation. Yeah, this is what I was asking whether it can be generalized to all Eulerian graphs because these graphs are certainly Eulerian because they're every edge is double. Yeah, but it's more than Eulerian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but for Eulerian, then there is a gap, at least for the LP. What is the, the status of uh, local search algorithms for uh, facility location? And, uh, for Canadian, the local search is, was the best, right? 3 plus epsilon. That's based on local search. And for K media, no, no, for facility location. And, and the breeder is known to be tight, or this is just. Yes, uh, for local search, that's tight. There is a no candidate gap of three. And for, for facility location, I think it's 1.7 or something. So I have many results here, right? I think first this is based on local search, and uh, I think this I don't know which one, but there is one result based on local search. But all here are based on LP rounding. So you didn't talk about this 1.488. Did you say something about that? Yeah, it's LP rounding. Based so it's. So here we get a 1.5. So it's based on selecting a single number, gamma f. Notice that we have a figure here. So what Bika did was select one gamma and a, a result here. Combine a result here and a result here and connect the two results to get 1.5. What I showed is Instead of select one number here, I can select a distribution of numbers that can improve the result. 
So you you did it all in C system? Oh. No. You look to a station also on some kind of hierarchy. Oh, no, just LP. Yeah. And uh, is there any hope to 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 to, to grow some kind of in UGC hardness or, or, or some other hardness in the LP? LP for what? For which problem? Uh, for, for, for this problem. For the location? Yeah, let's see. Uh, we don't know. At least it suggests that we can get a tight uh, bound at, for now. Because the LP gap is uh, 1.463, and uh, this is also the hardness result. And now we are very close to the hardness result. That means that it really should be the right answer. The best LP gap is the same as the best hardness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but even if you erase the LP, it's, you know, the gap is it's from the set cover. It's from the max coverage. No, but suppose so, so somebody proves a better uh, integrality gap, uh, low bound. Uh, oh, lower bound. For, for, you know, so suppose you know, to, tomorrow somebody improves the low bound for, for the integrality gap of LP. It, it won't apply right away uh, a better hardness. No, no, no. So, but the hardness implies the LP gap. Why did the WP result like that? So I believe that's what a lot of people believe. Mm -hmm. so, so this number comes from some solving of any solving Which number? Uh, this 1.463. Uh, yeah, yeah it's this number. Oh, that, oh this. This, this, this. Oh, yeah, sorry. Gamma C <laughs> equals. And 1 plus 2 over E also from this curve. And the red curve, you gave the formula for the red curve as well? Or? Red curve, though, so there's a turning point here. If you can move this turning point to here, then we solve the... the but there's also a formula for this red curve as well? For this side, yes. For oh, this side, no. <laughs> for this side, it's based on a computer-assisted proof. Uh -huh. We know this is 2 and... Uh, this is 1.488, and the analysis is complicated. But we know it's con convex. That's all what we know. Okay. But it's, the computer analysis is sort of gives you rigorous bounds on it, right? No, I only so. I'm not satisfied with computer-assisted proof, yeah. so I give a uh, I'm asking for clarification uh, of what you mean when you say computer-assisted. No, I need to solve the LP. Solve the LP. The LP will give us the solution, but then I will manually give the solution, say that this is a bound. More questions? Uh, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.